this is the most complete, capable, comfortable and convincing electric motorcycle anyone's ever built. But is that enough? So what is an Xperia, or more to the point, what is an Energica? Well, Energica are a small Italian firm who specialise exclusively in making electric motorcycles, and they have done for just shy of 10 years now. They're based in Modena, which is just down the road from Ducati, funnily enough, uh, about 30 miles away. And until a few months ago, if you'd uh, tried to describe Energica in a simple phrase, you'd say they were the Ducati of electric motorcycles. That is, until Ducati decided to build an electric motorcycle. Until now, their range has been exclusively super bikes and super nakeds, and in fact, they supplied the bikes for the Moto E World Cup, which runs uh, in parallel with the Moto GP series. So you may know the name from that. But this, the Xperia, is a completely new platform for them. So a completely new battery, completely new motor, completely new concept. As you can see, it's something of an all-rounder, uh, something in the vein of a Multistrada, funnily enough. Now, they call the Xperia a green tourer, which sounds like a bit of a contradiction. I mean, an electric touring bike, how's that going to work? Sure enough, when we asked you to supply some questions through our social media, almost all of them were about how far does it go and how long does it take to recharge? Two pretty key and understandable criteria when it comes to doing any kind of distance on a motorbike. So let's cut to the chase. This has the largest battery ever put in a production motorcycle. If you speak nerd, it's 22 and a half kilowatt hours. And if you don't, it's about 50% bigger than any other battery in the Harley Davidson Livewire or the top end zeros. What does that get you? Energica say 138 miles. That isn't my experience today. around on a mix of giving it some berries and sticking to some speed limits I'd say I covered about enough to suggest maybe a hundred to 110 mile range if you were going at high speed on a motorway for a long ride as most tourists do I think it's probably safer to bet on maybe 90 to 100 miles if you were sitting back enjoying the scenery and taking things at a far more leisurely pace you could definitely do 150 miles and if you stuck to the city maybe even 200 but then why would you buy a bike like this to ride around the city for 200 miles? And when all those juicy electrons have been used up, how do you recharge it? And how quickly can you recharge it? Well, the first answer is under here. There are some plugs. And what you plug it into defines how quickly it will recharge. Providing you can find the right kind of CCS DC charger, there's a lot of acronyms there, then this bike should be capable of fully recharging in about an hour, maybe a little more if you are right down the bottom of the battery capacity. More impressive is that if you can recharge from just 20% to 80%, that should be done, Energy could say, in less than half an hour. So if you could imagine riding for maybe 80 miles, stopping for 20, 30 minutes, and then having another 80 miles available to you, that's not bad. Certainly not bad by electric bike standards, but probably a long way short of what most of us have come to expect from petrol powered tourers. But of course, very few of us have a 25 kilowatt DC CCS charger in our garages at night. So the other option is to simply plug it into the wall with a standard three pin household socket. Now that puts out an awful lot less power. And that does mean that this enormous 22 and a half kilowatt hour battery it's going to take something in the order of at least 10 hours to fully recharge. Not so much of a problem if you've got a nice warm garage where you can leave it and recharge overnight and leave every morning with a full battery. Quite handy that actually, it'd be a bit like having a petrol tap in your garage. So that's how far it can go and that's how fast it takes to recharge, or slow indeed. But what's it actually like to ride? That's the bit almost nobody seemed to ask us about and I think that's probably 
the biggest appeal of electric bikes um, and the only thing you can actually experience from having ridden it. I would say it's enormous fun. I've ridden bikes for about 25 years now since my 16th birthday. I'm a dyed in the wool petrol head, but this is a very different experience. The motor is actually the smallest and least powerful in Energica's range, but that's no bad thing because it makes more sense in a Tora and it means it can be lighter and they can package it much easier. It's still not a bad performer. There's just over 100 horsepower and 85 lubfoots of torque, which for those not keeping score is more than a Fireblade and more than a BMW S1000RR. And the end result, even though there's no gearbox and no clutch, is this amazing, seamless, ever ready, pardon the pun, stream of torque ready to just fling you off into the distance. And one mistake many people who haven't ridden electric bikes think is that it's silent and therefore it must be boring with none of the vibration and none of the oral treats of internal combustion. That isn't the case. There is a noise that the Energy Cure Xperia makes. It's not the booming thud of a V-twin and it's not the high-pitched scream of an inline four, but it's his own thing. It's, it's almost sci-fi in this high-pitched shrill squeal as the electric motor spins up. It's, it's not so much unleaded as dilithium crystals flinging you into the horizon. And speed-wise, well, it's certainly no slug. This thing leaps from a standstill to 60 in a claim three and a half seconds, and having tested it unofficially, I think they're not far off the money there. And it just keeps on going up through 60 up and into the kind of German autobahn speeds. Now, there is an electronic speed limiter at 112 miles an hour, but frankly, who's bothered? Another thing that electric bikes sometimes rightly get picked up on is their weight. And sure enough, on the spec sheet, the Energica Xperia is a bit tubby. Energica claimed 260 kilos for it, which puts it up there with BMW's GS, or maybe even the GS Adventure. But I have to say, having just ridden it, it doesn't feel heavy. And I know that sounds like a trite cliche, but as soon as you get going on this, it really is every bit as agile and as dynamic and as easy to fling into corners as a bike weighing 40 kilos less. It turns in really easily, it holds a line fantastically, and the suspension is far better quality than almost every other electric bike that I've ridden. And despite weighing 260 kilos, it stops with surprising force. As you can see, braking is by Brembo, it's Italian, what else would you expect? And when you squeeze the front brake lever, there really is some serious stopping power, supported by some really strong, well-damped forks. And of course, as you are slowing down, you're putting a little bit more energy back into the battery, and that makes you feel good about the world. Being a modern, high-tech, high-fangled all-rounder, of course, this comes with all sorts of electronics. There's cruise control and heated grips and a TFT dash and lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control and all sorts of stuff. What else would you expect for your, well, should we come back to the price in a little bit? Although this might look like quite a tall bike, certainly something like a Multistrada. I have to say the seat height isn't too bad at all. I'm a tediously pedestrian five foot nine and I can still get both my feet flat on the floor. Uh, and if you are a little bit nervous about pushing a 260 kilo bike around at slow speeds, there is in fact a reverse gear and even a crawl forward mode where you can let the bike do the work instead of your poor tired back, knees and legs. So if the range and the recharge time hasn't put you off yet and you're still watching, you better brace yourself, sit down, put a safety net beneath your jaw, because let's talk money. This motorbike, including some panniers and top boxes that will come on the first edition bikes, will set you back 27,790 pounds. Yes, that is an excruciating amount of money and virtually impossible for me to justify to you with a straight face. By any measure, this is an extremely expensive and extremely limited purpose motorcycle. But I love it. I absolutely love it. If I had the kind of money to spend on this, I would have one in my garage tomorrow. But I don't. And I'm sure the vast majority of people watching don't. So we have to be realistic about what the purpose of the Energica Xperia is. 
If it isn't to sell in big numbers, and it certainly isn't to sell in big numbers because Energica are such a small firm, they're practically their whole output for the year could be measured in three figures rather than four. Then what is the point of a bike that claims to be a green tourer but isn't as good a tourer as a petrol bike? For me, it's about progress. This has the biggest range of any electric production bike anyone's ever built. It's the most capable, the most versatile, the most comfortable. Of all the electric bikes that have been built, this is by far the best tourer. So if you take it as that definition of a green tourer, then I think it fits the bill. The reality is we're still in very early days for electric bikes. In fact, we're still in very early days for knowing what the future in a post fossil fuel world is. It could be electric, it could be hydrogen, it could be synthetic fuels or biofuel or who knows. But all of those other technologies are just that, they are the future. They haven't yet been developed for road riders. Whereas this, the Xperia is a fully finished, finalized production bike that you can go to an Energica dealer and buy. Or even if you don't have 28,000 pounds, you could at least go and get a test ride and have a go and feel for yourself what this is like. Because I promise you, even if you have no intent on buying it, opening this throttle and charging off into the distance with that high-pitched squealing wail of the sound of the future, maybe, it is an experience like nothing else in motorcycling. I've ridden a few electric motorcycles now, in fact, I think about 30 at the count over the last 15 years, everything from pioneering electric scooters through to TT Zero race bikes and even a hydrogen-powered Suzuki Bergman, which isn't a sentence you get to say out loud very often. But of all of them, this one, sincerely, is the best. That doesn't mean it's going to convince everyone to trade in their petrol bikes just yet, but this represents progress. It represents an advancement of electric bikes. And for that, we should all be very impressed and we should all be very curious to go and have a go on it.